Hi, I'm Mangla. I've been in the IT for past 11 years, uh, working on to Java, JavaScript and XML. So uh, for the next couple of days, we'll be looking at uh, Java and J2E. So we'll be uh, covering all the concepts of Java, like the packages, interfaces, exception handling, the JVM, uh, the multi-threading, networking, JDBC, and in J2E, the RMI, Java Beans, JMS, Servlets, JSP, and EJB. So these are the topics to be covered for the next couple of days. So let's start off with OOP's concepts as Java is an object-oriented programming language. So let's look at what are the features of OOP's. First of all, there are four features of OOP's. One, encapsulation. Two, inheritance. Three, polymorphism. And four, abstraction. Now let's look at more in detail these features. Now what do you mean by encapsulation? Encapsulation means putting together all the variables and the methods into a single unit called as a class. So you define a user defined data type called a class. So you write uh, the keyword class followed by the class name and inside this class you will specify the variables that is the attributes and the characteristics those are the methods so when you put together the variables and the methods inside a single unit called as a class it's called encapsulation now inheritance inheritance is used for code reusability you already have defined an object or rather you have already defined set of attributes and characteristics which you would like to make use of again and expand upon it so you are making use of the already written code and further extending on that that's why we talk about code reusability that is inheritance next polymorphism polymorphism means polymorphic means many forms so there are two types of polymorphism that we talk about out here called as static binding and dynamic binding static binding is so called because it is checked at compilation time whereas dynamic binding the checking is done at runtime so example of static binding is function overloading when we talk about dynamic binding it is when a particular object acts differently depending on the type of reference that's passed to it so we'll talk about this little later now coming to abstraction abstract means something which is unknown so this generally occurs the abstract data types occurs at the generic level of classes at the top level of classes that is abstraction so now let's look at an example of each one of these features 